Hey everyone, welcome to Shaper Sessions. I'm Russ, and today we're going to be talking about new bits. We've been waiting for a long time for these. They finally dropped, and I'm excited to show you all this great stuff that we've got. We've got nine total new bits. We're also going to do a review of the existing bits that we stock and that come stock with Origin in the US. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to remind everyone, if you're watching this live, please, uh, most of the great action that comes with these videos is actually in the comments. So we've got Blake moderating the comments today. Feel free to drop any questions that you have during the show in the comments. Blake will record those and send them to me to answer live at the end of the show if they're not something that can be answered right away. Or a lot of the time, also, he'll take that answer on the spot. Uh, so if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. We also get a lot of cross talk between a lot of our viewers, as you might have noticed already. And then also, important thing at the end of the show, we're going to do a giveaway. And today, we're giving away a couple of these great new bits. We're going to give away my favorite three. We're going to give away a 15 degree dovetail cutter. We're going to give away a new 8 millimeter long reach cutter that lets you go super deep into tenons. And then we're going to give away the granddaddy uh, our German colleagues call it the time saver. It's a 16 by 16 millimeter clearing bit. Um, this is the biggest cutter that I've ever used with Origin. I just started using it this week. I'm super excited to show it to you all, and I'm super, super excited to give one away. Um, we're going to cover some kind of techie information. So for you nerds, uh, you're hopefully going to love that for everybody who's just like, get the hands on the tool and show me this stuff, show me how good these cutters are. Uh, hang on till the end of the show, we're gonna do a demo with two of my favorites, that 16 by 16 millimeter clearing bit again, and that eight millimeter long reach cutter. I've got a nice big pocket here set up on workstation that I'm gonna clear out. Like I said, we've got Blake in the comments. We've also got Ned operating the switchboard today. Thank you, both of you guys. Uh, let's get this show on the road. So we put together a slide deck for you guys today. Uh, we're going to start off with just router bits 101. What is a router bit? What's all the stuff that goes into this? We've got more than you might expect. The depth that goes into creating these router bits is intense. Uh, we're going to go through these as they relate. Uh, as often as possible to our standard quarter inch router bit that ships with Origin so that you all can relate as best as possible. The first thing that's gonna be most obvious to you when you look at the packaging or look at a router bit itself is the overall dimensions. How big is this thing? Uh, as, it, as the name might suggest, for that quarter inch router bit, that's gonna be the shank diameter and both the cutting diameter. We've got a shank diameter, cutting diameter, cutting length, overall length, and then also a cutting angle that can come into play for a lot of these. So Ned, let's switch over to the origin cam here, and I'm going to point some of these out to folks. The overall length, as you might suspect, is that total length of the router bit from tip to tail. The cutting length is much shorter than that. That is the section of router bit that you can cut with. And in the case of this quarter inch router bit that we ship stock with Origin, that's three quarters of an inch. And that's based on a good rule of thumb that we've come up with here, uh, based on experience, which is that the, the prime cutting length for a router bit is about three times its diameter, give or take. That doesn't mean that you can't go longer than that. There are certainly cases where you'd want to do that, and we'll dive into that later in the show. There are also cases where you'd want to go shorter than that. But for general use in wood, you want that cutting length to be about three times the diameter. On this cutter, the cutting diameter and the shank diameter are equivalent. That's a quarter inch. And this part here being the shank, this part here being the cutting edge or the flutes. You can see that's the same diameter all the way across. The cutting diameter is important because that's the setting that you're going to use in origin. That's the amount of material that you're going to remove in one pass with this cutter. The shank diameter is important because that tells you what collet to use. We support five collets now with Origin. The quarter inch collet comes stock with Origins shipped to the United States. But we also have three metric and one more inch collet. We have an eighth inch collet, which is really handy for smaller cutters. We have a eight millimeter 
collet, which is really good for some of these bigger cutters I'm going to show you later. We have a 6 millimeter collet and a 3 millimeter collet as well that open up your options. Um, those are most of your overall geometry specs there. And if we just go back to that cutting angle, thinking about that, what that is is something like this. So if you look at this quarter inch straight router bit versus this 11 degree tapered router bit, uh, you can see that the 11 degree has that cutting angle, um, tapers in for this tapered router bit, uh, tapers out for something like a dovetail router bit, and you definitely want to keep track of which of your router bits have that angle and which don't. Uh, almost all of the router bits that we stock or that we sell with Origin are straight, with the exception of this 11 degree and that dovetail bit. Uh, but there are router bits out there that have a very slight, for example, one angle, one degree taper, uh, and it's important to keep track of that. Let's go back to that overview page. We've got all of your geometry, uh, overall dimensions. Now let's dive into flute geometry. The flutes are the both cutting edge and then that hollow area surrounding the cutting edge that allows you to cut and evacuate material from your workpiece. And there are a lot of considerations that go into this. We've got listed out here spiral direction, so that's up spiral, down spiral, compression, straight flutes. I'll show you all these in a minute. We've got number of flutes. Uh, a lot of these router bits, most of the ones that we sell have two flutes. That's very common for wood, but there are cases where you want more or less. Less being one flute or one cutting edge. More being, for example, three. We now stock two router bits that have three cutting edges. Uh, end geometry, most of our router bits have a flat end. Some of them now have a round or a ball nose. Um, some of them also have something that's called a fishtail or a crescent end, and I'll show you those in a second. And then center cutting, which is very important. So let's switch back to Origin Cam again and do a comparison with this quarter inch router bit. Now, this is the way you'd install that quarter inch router bit in Origin. And you can see that as I turn the tool, those flutes look like they are spiraling upwards. And we call this an up spiral or up helix router bit. Um, that's that spiral direction. There are a lot of different variants on that. We also have, not for sale, but uh, possible as an option, a down spiral router bit. They also make straight flute router bits. These are pretty common in the woodworking world. You've probably seen these if you've looked for router bits at like Home Depot, for example. These have straight carbide pieces brazed onto a steel shank. And then getting really out there, we have some router bits that are even cut both ways. We have this, which is a diamond cut router bit. And then we have this guy here, which is called a compression spiral router bit. Um, and we can just go back to the main camera here for a second. There are different situations where you would need each of these. We mostly here at the Shaper Shop use the up spiral variety of router bit. And that's because that is the variety that most easily pulls all of that cut material up, out, and away from your work. It also pulls origin down, the base of origin down into the material that you're cutting so that you have a nice, stable base to move origin around your workpiece and your workspace. Um, when you have something like a down helix router bit, it's pushing those chips down into your workpiece. And it's actually trying to lift origin up. So you have to fight that and push it back down. Uh, it just leads to some instability. If you use an up spiral router bit or a straight fluted router bit or even a compression router bit, it's going to give you a much more stable cut. Um, it evacuates those chips. Highly, highly recommended. Yet, there is a place where you would want to use a down spiral router bit. The number one area where I use a down spiral router bit is for inlays and marquetry. Now, for inlays and marquetry, you're cutting very shallow work. And so the amount that Origin is pushing back up is very small. You also get a much finer edge quality with a down cutting router bit. You don't get any of that fuzz that you might get with an up spiral or a straight fluted router bit. That's because that cutting edge is coming down through that top edge of your workpiece rather than coming 
up through that top face of your workpiece and creating those fuzzes. So I really like those down spiral router bits for inlay. For that, you would use maybe an eighth inch or a sixteenth inch. Again, you're taking a very, very small cut as well. So the forces that that router bit is imparting back on origin is much smaller compared to a large roughing bit, which you definitely wouldn't want to use a down spiral router bit on. The diamond router bit you might use for composites helps prevent fraying for those. And the what's left? Compression router bit. That's a fun one. You can use that for plywood and for laminates. That keeps the top layer and the bottom layer of plywood or laminate compressed into the work so that neither the top chips out nor the bottom chips out. If you're using a nice sharp router bit, in my experience, that's not a problem anyway. I just use an upspower router bit for almost anything these days, but it's something fun to experiment with. Uh, let's see. We've got number of flutes. That was the second thing that we talked about on that list. Let's go back to the origin cam here. Again, comparing to this standard quarter inch cutter, you can see that this has two cutting edges as I rotate it, or two flutes. Flutes and cutting edges are basically synonymous. It's the vocabulary there. There are also cases, though, where you might want fewer or more than that. For example, this is an O-flute cutter. O-flute cutters are great for cutting soft metals and plastics, and we'll cover that with a couple of the O-flute cutters that we're releasing later today. We also covered those in our Shaper session two weeks ago on making keyholes. We cut some brass with an O-flute cutter. But you'll notice that this has just one cutting edge as I rotate it all the way around. And what that one cutting edge allows is it allows actually more clearance for a single chip to build up inside that flute. So it gives you more clearance for those chips to be evacuated, although you might want to run a little bit slower in that case. We also have three fluted router bits that I'll show you later that we're releasing. And those are on the larger side. So that's an instance where this cutting diameter is just so large, and you've got so much distance as those flutes are traveling around the outside perimeter of this cutter that it's really nothing lost to just sneak another one in there. You've got so much clearance because think about a 16 millimeter diameter tool. You've got a lot of flute depth in there. You've got a lot of clearance for those chips to come out. And so nothing lost by adding one more. It actually reduces a lot of the cut pressure that uh, is basically what you feel as resistance when you're pushing origin around. Let's go back to the slide deck one more time and look at what we've got left here. We've got end geometry and center cutting on flute geometry here. Now, end geometry is the shape of the end of the router bit. And if we look at this quarter inch router bit here, you can see that it's got a nice flat end. Now, we're starting to come out with a couple of different options here. You might notice if you look, for example, at some O flute cutters that are available on the open market, this is not flat. It's a little bit hard to tell, but it's pointed down here at the bottom right. And this is what we call a crescent end. Um, this is going to plunge really well, and it's going to take great edge passes. It's going to leave a great clean edge because just that tip is plunging through your material. But it's not going to leave as flat of a surface when you're pocketing, for example. We also have some kind of out there end geometry such as this roundover bit. This counts as end geometry as well. This is an eighth inch roundover, and you can see it's got this hollow on each side. You use this to maybe cut a bead, as Jake did in his uh, box for the Shaper Box Challenge, or use this to cut a roundover on, uh, on a nice rectangular piece of wood. And then we've got center cutting. This is a new concept for a lot of people with CNC router bits compared to standard woodworking or router table router bits. And I'm going to try my best to illustrate this. I hope that you can see on the bottom of this router bit that these flutes, these flat faces, come all the way in toward the center of this router bit here. Now, what that allows is for this router bit to actually plunge straight down into your workpiece as it's turning and cut. The opposite of that would be this router bit right here. Oh, let's, let's get back here. This router bit here, where you can see there's a cutting edge here and a cutting edge here, brazed carbide inserts on this one. 
but no cutting edge between these two points. And what that means is that with this router bit, you cannot plunge straight down into your material. It does not mean that you can't use this router bit with Origin. You absolutely can, but you have to be careful. You don't want to plunge this router bit into the middle of a workpiece unless you've already pocketed out that area. The other thing that you could do is start this router bit on the outside of your workpiece and cut into your workpiece, but you couldn't plunge this into your workpiece without first removing that material. You'll just crash. Most of the router bits that we sell are center cutting or plungeable, so 90% of them. We do have a couple exceptions now, though, the dovetail router bit being the most important of them. Uh, you would not be able to plunge that dovetail router bit down into a workpiece uh, without at least pocketing out that area first. And now when it comes to end geometry, flute geometry, there's one really important thing that I have to mention. This is a big no-no. This is a don't do. That is use router bits with a bearing on them. These are for trim routers, router tables, plunge routers, not for CNC routers, not for shaper origin. You don't want to plunge anything into your workpiece that cannot cut. And this bearing area cannot cut, so this is an absolute no-go. Let's go back to that slide deck. We've got one more characteristic of router bits, and that is what it's made out of, material. Um, there are three materials, basically, that a router bit could be made out of. I completely omitted the third because it's not even worth storing in your memory. And that option is high-speed steel or a completely steel router bit. Um, you can make cutting edges out of steel, but they are not nearly as durable as carbide. They won't last nearly as long. They're basically cheap and disposable, and I don't recommend using them. Uh, we don't recommend using them here at Shaper Tools. So your two options remaining are solid carbide and brazed carbide. Let's just give a look at what each of those looks like. This nice, shiny, heavy tool on my right is solid carbide, and this is ground out of one solid carbide rod. This tool on my left here is a brazed carbide tool. And what that means is that these two carbide edges are brazed uh, or basically soldered or welded in uh, loose terminology onto this steel shank. And you might say, Russ, you just said no steel anything. Uh, well, no steel cutting edges. It's OK to have a uh, steel shank, but you want those cutting edges to be carbide just because that carbide is so much more durable than steel. It is far and away worth your money, especially if you clean your router bits regularly and keep them in good shape. So, OK, man, uh, I hope everyone learned something there. I know that was a lot to digest. We're going to apply that new knowledge to all the router bits that we are launching now here at Shaper Tools. Just want to take a beat before we get into that. Please ask your questions in the comments. I'm sure that there are a lot of them. I hope that there are a lot of them. We'll answer all of those at the end. Um, also answer the poll question that's going to pop up or maybe already has popped up at the bottom of your screen to enter our giveaway if you're watching live. And again, we're giving away three new router bits today. My favorites, a dovetail router bit, an eight millimeter long reach router bit, and a 16 millimeter by 16 millimeter big honking clearing bit um, and answer that poll question to enter the giveaway. OK, let's show off what we got. We're going to start with the router bits that come stock with Origin. We'll just talk about those in the context of those features that we discussed. And then we'll go into the new router bits. So let's pull that slide back up, Ned. All right, this is our quarter inch router bit, uh, quarter inch by 3 quarter inch up spiral. This is the router bit that you know and love. We use it more often than anything else here with Shaper Sessions. It's a nice two flute straight end mill router bit geometry. Um, pretty classic, honestly. You can do almost everything that you want to do with Shaper Origin with this router bit. Um, it's got nice straight uh, cutting angle so that you can get nice straight sides on your tenons, for example. And it's got that two flute classic 
up spiral geometry so that you can easily clear away that material. Two flutes is a great number of flutes for wood. It's also a great number of flutes for plastics, um, foams, other soft things. I would not recommend using this cutter for metals, uh, or that is to say you can use it with metals, but we have better router bits out now for metals. Other than soft metals, this is a great all around router bit. Let's pop to the slide for our eighth inch router bit. Again, this comes stock with origin. This is basically that same geometry as the quarter inch cutter, but a slightly smaller cutting diameter and a slightly shorter cutting length. And again, that is because when you think about cutting length, it's almost like thinking of a diving board uh, or walking the plank on a pirate ship. The longer the plank or the longer the diving board, the longer that end is going to bounce or the more deflection that you're going to have. Uh, if you think of walking out on a very thin diving board, that's going to deflect more for a given distance than a thick diving board. And so for larger diameter cutters, we can increase that cutting length really easily. And for smaller diameter cutters, you definitely want to bring that cutting length back a little bit. So this is an eighth inch by a half inch uh, router bit that's pushing that three to one ratio that I mentioned before a little bit. But we've found that this works really well. Um, this works especially well for inlays if you're going to do inlays with out-of-the-box origin router bits, especially if it's sharp. If you're going to be doing a lot of inlays, I recommend going for an even smaller diameter router bit and that down-cutting helix geometry. And last but not least, out of our basic origin kit, there is the engraving bit. This is a 60 degree engraving bit. So this is where we start to talk about that uh, cutting angle. So we talked about cutting length, cutting diameter, overall length, shank diameter. This bit also has a cutting angle. And on this bit, that's 60 degrees. Uh, we are going to drop in just a couple of weeks, I think also a 90 degree engraving router bit. This one's 60 degrees. That 90 degree is going to be really good for chamfers. Uh, this 60 degree is really good for getting nice crisp lines in lettering, for example, for doing engraving, anything that you might want to fill uh, close, small lines in with epoxy, for example. I use this. Marking things to be cut with the track saw. I use this pretty good. Um, yeah, good all-purpose 60 degree engraving bit. Now this is a two flute. Again, you can see one flute here, one flute over here. But unlike the up spiral quarter inch and eighth inch router bits, this has a straight flute, you can see. And again, that's going to give you a little bit less tear out. Uh, the up, up spiral flute tends to pull that material up away from your workpiece. The straight flute tends at least a little bit better to just shear those wood fibers, especially in the case of wood, shear those wood fibers right off at that top surface. And we can do this on the engraving bit because you're taking so much less material per cut than you are with a quarter inch up spiral router bit that would get jammed, for example. Those flutes would get jammed up if they were straight flutes. All right, what's the next slide, Ned? I think we've got the five millimeter T-slot. Yeah, awesome. So we leaked this one two weeks ago, and it is finally for sale, the 5 millimeter T-slot router bit. Um, we used this two weeks ago on sessions to demo cutting a keyhole. You could cut a keyhole uh, in the back of a clock or the back of a picture frame or the back of a cabinet to hang. And this is the method that we used to cut that keyhole directly into the wood itself. Uh, also check out that show for tips on making your own brass plate keyholes, and we'll go into the cutters that we used for that in a bit. This is a plungeable or center cutting router bit. It's got just one flute. It's got a straight shank, or a straight, uh, I should say, cutting edge. And that's pretty much all you need to know. I mean, the interesting thing about this is that it makes a keyhole, or it makes a T-slot, which is pretty stinking cool. Um, you could use this to make fixtures. Again, you could use this to make keyholes. It is a really good one. I think the cutting length on this one is about 13 millimeters, which is short in the grand scheme of things, but completely fine because you don't want to make super deep 
T-slots or keyholes, you want to make those accessible and usable. Um, not to forget, uh, once we start talking about these special application cutters, we've got special applications for them. We've been using these cutters for a long time. And so, for example, not only did we use that router bit for the keyhole show that we did two weeks ago, we also use that router bit in the pen tray premium project. Uh, premium projects are a great way to get acquainted with Origin, to wrap your head around how everything works. We do super detailed step-by-step -step instructions on those. And if you wanted to learn how to use a T-slot cutter or any other undercutting bit, this would be a great project to start with that. And I'll just show this off on the bench cam here so that everyone can see. You can see that undercut T-slot all the way around. It's not really a T-slot anymore at this point, but a nice undercut for this lid, which slides right in there. So pretty cool. All right, next slide. Dovetail cutter. I love this one. Um, we've used this one on a couple shows already as well. We've kind of done some sneak peeks. This is a 15-degree dovetail cutter, and that's actually an important note um, when you use this dovetail cutter, you are probably going to be designing your dovetails in uh, some kind of 3D model or a 3D template. We've got some 3D templates for designing dovetail profiles available on Shaper Hub. We've also done an in-depth dovetail shaper session that you should go back and watch if you're interested in designing your own dovetail paths. Um, but that angle actually is very important for designing your path. And it's important to note that 15 degrees is actually the more common dovetail angle in Europe. Uh, our German friends at Shaper HQ Germany picked this one out. 14 degrees, for some reason, is actually the more common dovetail angle in the United States. As long as you keep it in your brain that they're different, uh, you will be able to work it all out, I promise you. Uh, it's just some trigonometry. Nothing to be, nothing to shy away from. And we'll show off this project that we used this 15 degree dovetail bit with recently. This is Johannes Mueller's rising table. This is another premium project. Jake and I did a session a couple weeks ago on how we cut the tapered sliding dovetails that join the top of this table to these stretchers right here. Um, Definitely go back and check that out if you want to learn more about how to cut dovetails with Origin. Now I'll show this cutter off on the Origin cam here as well so that you can get a look at it. It's a little stubby, but you don't need much depth on this one. You just need the depth of the dovetail. The important thing to note about this one, remember we talked about center cutting. This is not a center cutting router bit. That's okay because you would not want to start your dovetails really in the middle of something, in the middle of a project anyway. Um, you would typically want to start those from outside your workpiece anyway, but if you do for any reason need to start your dovetails from the middle of your work, then you would need to clear out that center area with something like the stock quarter inch router bit to start. Again, uh, straight flutes on this one, two flutes, brazed carbide edges. So these are going to be nice, durable edges. Super good bit. All right, what do we got next? Oh, yeah. Now we're getting into the good stuff. The 16 by 16 clearing bit. And the first sentence on this is, this clearing bit will change the way you work with Origin. Oh, not to mention uh, that 15 degree dovetail bit that we just talked about. We're giving one away. Make sure you answer that poll question. What cutters do you want us to launch next, I think is the question of the week. Um, make sure you answer that question to be entered to win if you're watching this live. If you're watching this on demand, please join us live next time. We're also going to be giving away one of these 16 by 16 clearing router bits. And if we pop over to the origin cam here, we can take a look at this. This is a monster bit. It is super sharp. You've got three flutes there, but you still have a ton of room for evacuating those chips. Um, I used this for the first time this week, and it absolutely rips. Uh, they call it the time saver for a reason. 
It is definitely center cutting, so you'll see one of these flutes goes all the way to the center, so you can plunge with this, unlike some of those other large router bits that you'll find at Home Depot or your average big box store. Um, and man, it's really phenomenal. I can't tell you enough how good it is, so we're going to demo this toward the end of the show. I know everybody loves a good demo. All right, next slide. Uh, let's see, what's this? This is the eighth inch by quarter inch O flute bit. Now we actually talked about this bit at length two weeks ago, and that's because this is the bit that we recommend for cutting soft metals. And we cut a lot of brass last week. We made these really cool keyhole plates. Show these off on the origin cam here. We cut these 100% with origin. All of the profile was done with this eighth inch O flute by quarter inch router bit. And that eighth inch by quarter inch means that you have a, light, uh, a much shorter diving board so that you have a much stiffer router bit so that it can go up against something as hard and tough as this brass. And then for these countersinks here, we use that 90 degree engraving bit, which is on the way, we're going to have to do a show about that one once it's launched. Let's take a look at this router bit, though. That's what you're here for. This is that eighth inch by quarter inch O flute router bit. And like I mentioned with the larger O flute earlier, it's a single flute. Um, and O basically means single flute plus extra flute clearance. So this really evacuates the chips, gets them out of there. It's got a super sharp edge, which is good for shearing those soft metals. And these are also really good for plastics. Um, plastics, you definitely want to evacuate those chips. You want to use that super sharp edge so that it cuts rather than melts the plastic. This is really good for that. Moving on, next up, we have an eighth inch by half inch O flute router bit. Basically the same thing, but a little bit longer. Again, thinking about that diving board analogy, this bit is going to be a little bit flexier. It's kind of tricky to think about because if you hold these in your hand, you think, man, these are not flexy at all. They're solid carbide, which is one of the stiffest materials on earth. But when you uh, are cutting, you know, metals or plastics at 18,000 RPM in shape or origin, every little bit matters. Uh, and so we do recommend this preferably for plastics rather than metals because that extra length uh, really impacts the stiffness of that. And for you engineering nerds out there, especially mechanical engineering nerds or people who love math and equations, a good rule of thumb for this is that the Stiffness of a beam, the equation for the stiffness of a beam, which this basically is, supported at one end, is a cubic function of length. And so that means that if you double the length, it's actually eight times less stiff or eight times more deflection at this free end. We're imagining this end held completely rigidly in the collet and this cutting end being the free end. So when we've double this length from a quarter inch length to a half inch length, you actually increase the deflection at the tip by eight times, eight times less stiff. It's kind of mind blowing. You don't really think about stiffness in that way, but it's true. So keep that in mind. Next router bit, we've got another big papa coming up. We've got the eight millimeter long reach router bit, and we're gonna be giving one of these away today as well. We're gonna demo this later also. This is the longest router bit that we have sold at Shaper, um, and this is really great for super deep tenons. Uh, we're gonna finish the wall of a pretty deep bowl today, and what's so great about this is you can do all that finishing a uh, super long length in one pass. If you've tried to make tenons with origin that are longer than three quarter of an inch, you know that you have to do it in steps. It's a little bit of a hassle. Um, so this router bit solves that problem. It's super sharp. It leaves a great finishing pass. Uh, somehow miraculously, it's also really good at roughing at the same time. Probably has something to do with, again, having those three flutes. So it reduces that cut pressure per flute as with most of our tools, it is center cutting. So you can see that one flute going all the way into the center. So it cuts as you plunge, very, very important. And uh, 
don't have enough good things to say about this bit. The proof is in the pudding, and we'll see it work in action later. We've got a couple more. We are coming back to a more ordinary router bit. This is for folks that are just dipping their toes in the water of new router bits. You might say, wow, that looks an awful lot like your eighth inch by three quarter router bit. And that's because it is an awful lot like our eighth, or sorry, eighth inch, quarter inch, quarter inch by three quarter router bit. That's because this is a quarter inch by one inch router bit. It's just a skosh longer, as we say in the Midwest, uh, and it'll get you just a little bit extra reach for all the same things that that eight millimeter cutter will do, uh, a little bit more reach on tenons, a little bit more reach on pockets. Um, the trade-off there is that since this is, again, the same diameter, but longer, it might be a little bit more chattery, or you might have to dial it back just a little bit with the uh, aggressiveness of your cuts when you're using this router bit here. But another super great all-arounder, um, and the benefit of this compared to some of those other crazy, longer, stiffer router bits is that this one's going to be a little bit cheaper, uh, less expensive, still super high quality. It's just less carbide. Uh, when you're starting with a quarter inch, there's a lot less to grind away than when you're starting with eight millimeters. Or in the case of that 16 millimeter solid carbide tool, you're starting with a solid 16 millimeter rod of carbide that needs to be ground into that tool that, uh, that you saw just a moment ago. Uh, so great quality, a little bit less expensive, but still a really good all-around tool for getting just a little bit more reach. Okay, I think we're coming close to the end. I think we got two left. This one is going back to that cut angle that we were talking about earlier. This is an 11 degree tapered ball nose bit. You can see a very small ball nose at the end up there. And this is cool for adding profiles to your work. This is also really cool for wedged tenons. That's where we've used a bit like this the most. And I've got a little prop over here. You may have seen this before. This is our, this is from our old friend, the trestle bench. So the trestle bench is a project that we released about a year ago. This is a good one. This is a small piece from it, but you can see we've got this wedge, a wedged tenon right here. And if I hold this up to the bench cam, you can see that perfect fit between the two. So this wedge is really made exactly for this tenon. And that's because we've used the same 11 degree taper to cut both. We'll take a pass straight through the tenon with that 11 degree tapered router bit. And then what we actually do is make a lot of these up on end in the end grain of a piece of wood so that the grain is running along the length of the wedge. Take these over to the chop saw or to the bandsaw and then cut them off. And then you've got a whole bunch of wedges that you're ready to use for your wedge tenons. And you've got that perfect fit. So you've got a really good glue surface there. Good even pressure as well. So that's a cool one. Um, that's good, very general purpose, good for woods, um, good for plastics as well. You could use it for plastics. It uh, does get pretty narrow there toward the end, which does not mean that it's actually less stiff because it's that taper. So it's actually supported more the, uh, the closer you get to that shank diameter. It's supported surprisingly well, as opposed to an eighth inch diameter cutter that's an eighth inch all the way along. But those cutting flutes get really, really small. So you want to make sure that you're working with a material that's in a way compressible enough that the material that you're cutting away can fit in those flutes and be removed by those flutes. So that's a good one. And I think last but not least, Ned, is this the last slide? I hope it is. I'm running out of breath. I want to do a demo over here. I want to cut some stuff. Um, this is a cool one, long awaited quarter inch ball nose router bit. And this is a quarter inch by three cutter. So same cutting geometry more or less as our quarter inch by three quarter straight flute or uh, not straight flute, but straight sided uh, up spiral router bit. But it's got that rounded 
ball nose on the end. And this is really handy for a lot of things. We use this in the elate lamp to cut a cord relief in the neck so that you have this nice pocket for this colorful cord to go all the way up through the neck in. We did a whole shaper session on that. You could check that out. This is also really handy for finishing the inside corners of bowls. So if we go over to the bench cam, you've seen this guy a lot. This is a uh, part of the snowman dish that Jake made many Christmases ago. And you can see it's got this nice rounded profile on the inside. That was pocketed out 99% of the way with your standard one quarter by three quarter flat end router bit. And then just this corner was come in and finished up with that one quarter by three quarter ball nose router bit. So it just gives that extra a little bit of panache, a little bit of pizzazz to your projects. It says, this guy really thought about what he was doing, you know? I tell Jake all the time, you seem like you really thought about what you're doing. And that's all of our new router bits. <laughs> uh, check them out. They're always going to be up at shapertools.com. We've got some really great information. Ned, I think I've got one more slide that's just some helpful links. So let's flash that on the screen for a little while. Um, it's basically a Help Center article. I think Blake can also um, send a link to that in the comments. Uh, it is a link to shapertools.com accessories store where you can purchase all of these and learn more, check out all those geometry charts. Everything that we showed in the slides today is available on the shapertools.com website. Um, thank you, Goose. Uh, not only main switchboard operator, but also Illustrator Pro for making those beautiful illustrations. And then last but not least, you want to use your new router bits. So check out Shaper Hub. Uh, we've got all kinds of great premium projects and community projects that these new router bits are directly applicable to. Uh, and we hope that you find a project in there. I know that you'll find a project in there that's going to be worth your time to make. Test one of these new router bits out. Speaking of testing these new router bits out, um, before we wrap the show, got to do a demo. That's what at least half of you are here for, I'm sure. See how all this works. We are going to use the 16 millimeter clearing bit to do two more passes on this bowl that I started earlier today. And then we're gonna use that eight millimeter long reach router bit to just finish up the outside perimeter. So Ned, let's hop over to the workstation cam and take a look at what we're doing today. This is this bowl, you might think, What's this crazy angle going on here? Well, this is the tail end of a piece of white oak that we had over in the lumber rack. Um, and before, just a couple hours ago, this was kind of a gnarly piece of bark. You know how just the tail ends of boards can get a couple little inclusions. So I sliced that off. What I did was I scanned this all in with Origin. And then we get pretty complicated complicated over here at Shape Recessions. We do some really intense stuff. So I thought, I'm just going to dial it back. I made this shape completely with the pen tool on Origin freehand. And I'll show you that shape on Origin screen in a moment. But this is what we're working with. We're going to pocket this two levels deeper. And then we're going to finish up this outer perimeter with that eight millimeter long reach cutter. So let's pop over to the Origin cam. Um, want to mention again one more time we're doing a great giveaway today three of my favorite router bits from this last drop so make sure you answer that poll question that is should be popped up at the bottom of your screen also more questions is better if you're watching this live we're going to get to those in probably about 15 minutes here we'll do that live q a so let's zoom out love this pinch to zoom you can see that if I hop into design mode here, you can see my design highlighted in green here. Um, there's no grid. This is just a shape that I plunked down with the pen tool. You go here, create, pen, and I drop these vertices freehand based on the image. Uh, we do a lot of really complicated stuff here. We make grids, we make cut files in advance in Illustrator. I thought today, you know, one of the cool things about wood is that it's organic. And one of the cool things about Origin is that you can use this image here to work 
with the piece of wood that you have and the unique characteristics of that piece of wood that you have. So I just scanned this piece in and I incorporated that little slice off of the corner. So you can see that my pocket's got that nice angle. This blue area is my cut history. Um, so you can see that I've pocketed this down by two cuts already, two levels. Uh, we're going to do two more big clearing passes with that 16 millimeter router bit. And then we'll do two finishing passes, or I should say one like offset pass to bring the wall out a little bit. And then one finishing pass to, oops, hit the zoom there. One finishing pass to bring that right out to the line on the image. So. We can pop over to the main cam here for a second. I've got to install that 16 millimeter router bit in Origin's spindle. Do a quick unlock, and now I've got a whole pile of bits here. I think it's this one. Yeah, 16 millimeter clearing bit. Quick little unlock there. I've already got that eight millimeter collet installed. Eight millimeter collet is awesome for big bits like this. That bigger shank gives you greater stiffness on these router bits. Make sure that's nice and snug, but not overly tight. It is possible to over tighten a collet, so you don't want to be ham fisted with it. You want to be respectful of the tool. Plug it back in. Make sure to snug that spindle clamp back up. And since I've already scanned and designed my path, all I need to do is I already have the router bit diameter set over here. I'm just going to Z touch because I reinstalled that bit. We're at 19 millimeters depth now. Um, I've found, uh, and we're going to 35, by the way, we're going to 35 millimeters depth on this so that you have a, I have a nice bottom left on my bowl. Um, you're going to want to experiment with these router bits. We have some guidelines out on our website, especially in that Help Center article, that give you approximations of what you can do with these router bits. But really, all materials are very different. Um, it's not really completely sufficient to say uh, hardwoods can be this, because the hardwoods are many different hardnesses. Uh, maple is a different hardness than oak, which is a different hardness than cherry. And also the grains of different woods cut differently. Uh, oak is a very open grained wood. And so it tends to be a little chippier, a little more splintery. And so as opposed to a more uh, consistent wood, a nice closed grain consistent wood. I'm going to be a little more conservative in my cuts in this because I don't want to pop a big chunk off. That'll be real herky jerky here. But it is, uh, I do want to show you all what this bit can do. So we are going to do an extra eight millimeters of depth here. So we're going to do two more eight millimeter depth passes. And that is eight millimeters deep by 16 millimeters wide. So we're really removing a ton of material here and you can see why we call it the time saver so done we'll calculate that um, just going through my list of cut settings here we've got the depth i'm doing a pocketing cut pocketing includes this offset so you can see the gap between the blue on the screen which is where my cut is and that cross hatch which is where the pocketing pattern is and that green line which is the edge of my actual cut path um, so pocketing has that automatic roughing offset built in. I'm not going to add any more to that. 16 millimeters is my cut diameter. Z-touch uh, I've just done. And I will make a note that I've turned down my plunge speed from the default 400 millimeters to 250 millimeters per minute. That was based on our recommendations in that sheet in the help center. And I think that's a good plunge speed. You can hear when this bit starts to plunge a little bit into the workpiece that the that origin spindle does slow down just a touch. You can hear the uh, tone of that spindle go down just by a couple little semitones, you know. Um, and so that's a good indicator that you're working right about at origins limit. So it's good that we turn that plunge down, but we're pocketing. So auto feed is not really applicable here. I'm just going to feed it by hand and I'm not going to take it easy on this. Um, I will note also that the spindle speed here is set at four, 
which is the recommendation that we have in the Help Center. And with that, I think we're all set. I'm going to let her rip for two more pocketing passes, and then we'll switch to that 8 millimeter uh, long reach bit to clear up the wall. Let's go. Whew. Whew. What a rush. Okay, uh, let's switch over to that workstation cam. You all can probably tell that I've pepped up a lot. Man, that's fun. Um, so we just took an extra 16 millimeters of depth out of this pocket super fast. Um, might be a little bit difficult to tell. We'll separate this part once we do that eight millimeter finishing pass on the wall. Uh, but the bottom of this is super smooth. And that's because partly, I think, because that 16 millimeter bit has such a nice wide flat area, there's just a much, much lower chance of steps like you might get with a smaller router bit. Minuscule steps, but sometimes you get just a little bit of fuzz on the bottom. And it's, man, I did this earlier today, but I'm still impressed with how good it is. So um, we can go back to the main cam for a bit. I am going to install my eight millimeter long reach bit, which again, we are giving one of those away today, just like we're giving away one of these 16 millimeter by 16 millimeter clearing router bits. So make sure you get in on that action. And this is it over here. We're gonna do this in two passes we're gonna because we just want to remove a little bit of material for the final pass we're going to do basically the equivalent of a roughing pass and finishing pass and i'm going to just hold this spindle a little bit up as i clamp it this is a pro tip because this router bit's so long you have to be careful of it uh, dragging on the work surface if you 
leave a little bit too much of it hanging out of the spindle. Uh, we talked about that in our Origin Pro Tips session, how to get the maximum use out of a long reach cutter. So if you're interested in that, go back and check that one out. So I've got this all clamped up. If we go back to Origin screen here, I'm gonna change this cutter diameter to eight millimeters. Done, thank you Origin for reminding me I've got a Z-touch, so we're gonna do that. My depth is still good. I'm gonna change this from a pocketing cut to an inside cut. And let's do a let's do a one millimeter offset. So it's gonna get a little heavy in the corner there, but I think a millimeter is gonna be enough for me to control it through that. And then we'll just have a one millimeter finishing pass for the uh, for the final pass on this project. I'm gonna keep my plunge speed is fine. I think I could probably up the plunge speed, but since I don't have the help center article uh, handy for reference, I think that the plunge rate is going to be completely fine as it is. And as far as feed rate, I'm just going to feed origin uh, as I feel it's appropriate. Spindle speed still on four. Maybe that was a bit much. Uh, that's what I get for trying this for the first time live. It is a live show, but this is a great opportunity to show off how Origin saves you from yourself. Uh, that's basically a quick overload error. It said, hey, hold on there, buddy. You're taking way too much. Um, did not practice this cut before the live show. Sometimes we get a little fast and loose over here. Like I said, this oak is a little bit chippy because it's so open grain. So what happened there is a bit of oak just splintered off. But if we go over to the workstation cam, you'll see that Origin automatically retracts that router bit like it's supposed to. I think that it has not like marred the project at all. It did exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, it's autocorrect for your hands and it prevents you from making mistakes like to the farthest extent possible. So we're actually gonna take this in a couple of steps um, we'll do maybe two depth passes and then we'll do just one finishing pass at that full depth. Um, we'll slow it down just a little bit and we should not get any overload errors at that point. Admittedly, I was pushing that one. So, and we do want to set you all up for success here. So let's take this and divide it by two. 17.5. That sounds pretty reasonable. Let's give it a shot. Um, and the moral of the story here is that it's all about trial and error. Uh, we can set you up as well as we can with help center articles and recommendations, but for a specific material and a specific project, um, you might have to make some mistakes occasionally, and that's how we all learn. So here we go. Now, let's vacuum this out. It's a little bit chippy, so, man, gonna have to take it just even slower, honestly, I gotta say. 35, 
divided by 4 equals times 3. So we probably should have done this in four steps. Uh, we'll learn from our mistakes on this one. Uh, this oak is really just super, super splintery. So you could see probably as I was cutting that, that it was really herky-jerky here on the top cut. And that's because I'm uh, what they call basically skiing uphill or going against the grain. And then when I came all the way down, this coming through this end grain was fine. This was buttery smooth down here because you're going with the grain. And then going into those corners, it really just just going against the grain like that on this specific piece of oak because it's got that open grain. Uh, sometimes different materials are a little bit harder to manage, especially at the end of the board where it's uh, maybe extra dry and already cracked a little bit to begin with. So we're going to slow it down. We're going to take our time. The cool thing about this 8 millimeter by 35 millimeter bit is the length. So we're going to be able to go all the way down and we're going to be able to clean this out super nicely still. All right. So vacuuming that out, we can see this is probably going to need a little bit of love in the corners because it was just so chunky that first couple of passes. So let's take this down to zero. We'll do some zero millimeter offset passes. I think I ripped a little bit extra grain out of this uh, this far upper right corner that was the worst grain transition and a big chunk pulled out uh, but the cool thing about origin is that you can use offsets especially in a non-critical setting like this you can use those offsets to just keep going uh, we'll pretend this is an undersized mortise for example and you need to bump that up just a little bit we're going to do that with offsets and take care of that problem super easily so the other thing that i'm going to do here first is Plunge in each corner. Um, since I'm having a little bit of problems going through these grain transitions in the corners, I'm going to plunge to full depth in each corner. And what that's going to do is it's going to remove that material while I've got a nice firm grip on everything um, so that it doesn't get away from you. It's easier to control that stuff while you're planted uh, than it is while you're moving, kind of like helix mode or kind of like plunging at the end of a cut off the end of something so you don't get any chip out. Similar theory. So let's get that in these four corners and then I'll do a finishing pass at half depth and a finishing pass at full depth.
All right. Now, you can see here, that's where I had that big blowout, right in that corner where you come around and change grain direction. Um, important to note, I think, that, like, I had a little bit of a, a blowout with origin here, but if you were to do this on a router table or with a plunge router, you'd be basically throwing your part. So um, as far as this is a, a testimony to the safety of something like Shaper Origin, uh, it doesn't always come down to this in these live shows, but sometimes it does. And I would like to show you also the wall finish quality, like over here on this end grain, if we go back to that workstation cam over here on these walls and the rest of the corners, it's just that grain transition really got the best of me. Um, what I would do if I were to fix this and give it to someone, I'll probably even actually do this later, is I would just add an extra negative one millimeter offset, and that's going to bump my profile out just that little bit extra that I need to remove that little nick. Um, but I think that we've got a lot of questions on this show, and so I want to go straight into that Q&A. Um, we'll pop this off, and I'll come back to this later, because I'll do this on my own time. We've done... Uh, plenty of cutting for today. I do think, though, that it is important to know how to be able to fix things, because we do know that we all make mistakes, and it's equally as important to be able to fix something as it is to perhaps, if it's even possible, not even make the mistake in the first place. So, let's see, here we go coming off nicely. The double-sided tape is back in stock, by the way. I know that we were out for a while. We got a couple of comments on our last session about that. Oh boy. Ha! Yeah, I didn't even notice this one. I picked this piece of wood. They've got a nice split there. If we go to the workstation cam, this is why we got that blowout. Can we switch to the workstation cam, Ned? Yeah, there we go. You can see this split right here. And that is equivalent to this blowout corner right there. So I'm sure there's just a nice little split right there. Um, again, take an extra little bit of offset. Pro tip for saving your work. If you get a little dig, just give it a little bit of offset, especially on a showpiece like this. So you can see, though, that we've got this beautiful finish quality on these faces with that long reach eight millimeter cutter and we we're able to go all the way down to the bottom we've also got that beautiful finish quality on the bottom of the pocket which is pretty hard to get any other way uh, with that nice 16 millimeter clearing bit and that's the show we'll see you next time